Think of Scrum as a lightweight framework that utilizes principles and practices that assist teams in delivering working software in short cycles to the customer, enabling rapid feedback, continuous improvement, and quick response to change. It promotes delivering value, as in working software to the customer, in an incremental and iterative way. It is not a process or technique for developing software. Rather, it is a framework within which various processes, techniques, and practices are employed. In Scrum, the iterations that deliver working software to the customer are called sprints. In each iteration, or sprint, results in potentially shippable software. This slide is a graphical representation of an agile project using Scrum. Starting at the left, you can see that the product owner owns the product backlog and in collaboration with the team develops the user stories or requirements for the project. The product backlog is prioritized with the higher priority items occupying the top of the product backlog. In collaboration with the product owner, the team decides how to group the user stories into releases based on the product roadmap. Once the release planning has been completed, the user stories are then selected for a sprint. The duration of the sprint is going to be two to four weeks. Once the sprint backlog has been determined, the team then disaggregates each user story into tasks. During each sprint, the user stories are developed. As the code is written, it is integrated into the system and daily scrums are held. At the end of a sprint, there is a sprint review where the working software is demonstrated and presented to the customer for acceptance. The team then conducts a sprint retrospective. During the retrospective, the team looks at primarily three things. What went well, what did not go well, and what should be done differently going forward. The team's velocity is then updated, as are the information radiators, which transparently display the status and progress of the project, and then the cycle repeats itself until the project is complete. A sprint is an iteration in Scrum. At the beginning of a project, the Scrum team determines the duration of sprints for the project. Most sprints are going to be two to four weeks in duration. Factors affecting sprint duration include the stability of the product backlog. Once a sprint has begun, the duration is never changed, nor are any user stories added or removed. Therefore, if many changes are expected, a shorter sprint duration would be best. However, if the product backlog is relatively stable, a longer sprint duration may be appropriate. Overhead. There are overhead costs associated with each sprint. For example, every sprint is going to have a sprint planning meeting, a sprint review, and a sprint retrospective. If a team has been able to lower these overhead costs, by automated testing, continuous integration, etc., these costs can be absorbed more easily, making shorter sprints more desirable. However, if these overhead costs remain high, the team may need to use longer duration sprints. A team may be tempted to extend the duration of sprints in an effort to hide their inefficiencies. Remember, agile projects favor shorter duration sprints, and it is the Scrum Master's responsibility to coach and mentor the team so it can reduce waste, irregularities, and overuse and make the sprint shorter. The goal of a sprint is to deliver working software. At the conclusion of each sprint, the team should be able to deliver near-releasable or potentially shippable software. This is not easy, especially for an existing product with a lot of legacy features, but it can be done with the right technical practices and mature development processes. Once the sprint duration has been determined and the user stories for the sprint have been selected, the duration of the sprint cannot be altered, nor can any user stories be added or removed. The sprint will end at the appointed time, irrespective of whether the team has met the sprint goals or not. This allows for effective continuous improvement. If the team is unable to deliver the working software as planned, the team will have to figure out why that happened and then make changes to improve going forward. The product owner may choose to cancel or terminate a sprint 
in specific situations. For example, a significant change in priorities or a mid-course correction may render the current sprint backlog invalid. Given that we are only talking about a couple of weeks of work, the cancellation of a sprint would be an extremely rare event. A sprint will begin with a sprint planning meeting and end with a sprint review and retrospective. There are three backlogs used in Scrum. The product backlog, the release backlog, and the sprint backlog. The product backlog is the master container of all the user stories for the project. The product backlog is continually pruned or prioritized so that maximum value is delivered to the customer. The release backlog is a subset of the product backlog. Releases support the product roadmap and each release is populated with user stories necessary for that release. The sprint backlog is a subset of the release backlog and contains the user stories to be developed in the sprint. As we said, the product backlog contains the user stories for the entire project and it is the responsibility of the product owner. User stories are features, functions, or requirements that deliver value to the customer. However, the product backlog will also have to contain technical or non-functional user stories necessary for the system to work properly. The product backlog may also include risk or defect related user stories. The product owner is responsible for keeping the product backlog current and up to date. This is accomplished by pruning the backlog, which is prioritizing and reprioritizing. The product backlog must also be continually groomed. This is the process of adding and removing user stories based on the needs and desires of the customer. There are four scrum ceremonies, the sprint planning meeting, the daily scrum, the sprint review, and the sprint retrospective. Let's take a detailed look at each of these ceremonies. The sprint planning meeting is time boxed at two hours for each week of the sprint. If the sprint is going to be two weeks in duration, then the time box will be four hours. If the sprint is going to be four weeks in duration, then the time box for the sprint planning meeting will be eight hours. It should be attended by the complete scrum team, including all roles. The most important aspects of this meeting are the team's capacity and the definition of done. There are two approaches to selecting user stories for a sprint. One is based on the velocity of the team. The other is commitment driven. Team buy-in is critical and the goals of the sprint should be clearly understood and the desired outcome should be clearly articulated with the definition of done. Then there's the daily scrum. The time box for the daily scrum is 15 minutes, regardless of the duration of the sprint length. The entire scrum team, including all roles, should attend the daily scrum. Each development team member individually answers three questions. What did I do yesterday? What am I going to do today? And what are my impediments? This is how the team members coordinate their work and the scrum master learns of the impediments he or she should be taking care of. The sprint review takes place at the end of the sprint and is time boxed at one hour for each week of the sprint. So if the sprint were four weeks in duration, the sprint review meeting would be four hours. It should be attended by the complete scrum team, including all roles, plus any other stakeholders who are interested in project success. The purpose of the review is to demonstrate working software and obtain and assess feedback. Feedback may range from full acceptance of the completed software to complete rejection. The sprint retrospective takes place after the conclusion of the sprint review and is time boxed at 45 minutes for each week of the sprint. So if the sprint has two weeks in duration, then the retrospective would be one and a half hours in length. It should be attended by the complete scrum team, including all roles. However, the product owner's attendance is considered optional. During the retrospective, the team answers four questions. What worked well? What did not work well? What should be done differently? And what still puzzles us? One or several problem detection techniques may be used in the retrospectives 
and this ceremony is a vital part of continuous improvement. At the conclusion of the retrospective, the team's velocity and the project's information radiators are updated. Then the next sprint planning meeting takes place and this cycle continues until the project is complete. The definition of done is an important artifact for a scrum team. It is the primary reporting mechanism for team members and there may be a different definition of done at various levels. Definition of done for a feature or user story. The definition of done for a sprint and the definition of done for a release. It's really just a checklist of activities that add verifiable and demonstrable value to the product. It's created by the Scrum Master in consultation with the team. A sample list of the items for the definition of done criteria is given here. The story is fully implemented or code completed as described. Automated unit tests have been developed with at least 80% code coverage Automated unit tests and acceptance tests in the story are passing. High priority test cases have been automated and added to the regression suite. Note, this is only meant to be an example. Each team's definition of done will vary slightly depending on the maturity of the team and the specific situation of the team. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.